Hi, it's Canatex here with the next video in a series of about installing Gen 2 on a 32-bit PC. So this uh, video I'm going to go through just installing a few utility packages um, and I'm going to touch on some of the tools that you can use to gain more information about packages and the system itself, what's installed. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to install um, Vi or Vim because um, the default text editor is Nano and um, I really don't get on with it very well. Um, it always tends to catch me out. Um, so what I should do first of all is to emerge Vi minus AV because I want it to be part of the world set. And you can see it says no e-bills to satisfy Vi. So there's obviously nothing called Vi. Maybe it's called Vim. It hasn't suggested that, but let's try Vim. And yeah, it's found something now. And you can see it's going to pull in three other packages. Um, now there's loads of switches in Vim, as you can see. There's one for GPM as well. So, being as I've got GPM stalled, installed, that might be one that's worth setting, uh, so that Vi is or Vim is built with GPM functionality. Um, there's Perl and Python there for, I believe that would be interfaces with those languages. Um, so there's capability for maybe Vim can talk to those languages directly perhaps so what I need to do next I'll stop that I need to add in that flag somewhere and if you remember there's um, a place we've looked at before Let's see, I'm already start to use fine it's still not installed which is under EDC portage um, make dot conf and we've got these flags here that we can add into this use string here and there's only one there at the moment ipv6 but if you remember this is only for global flags if i get the um gen 2 page up if you type in use yeah just use not if i do the right keyboard use flag index it should come up with the right page yeah, there it is there, use flagging index. This is uh, quite useful to have bookmarks. It's got a list of all the global use flags. So these are all the ones that will go into the make.conf file. And then it has a list of flags uh, per package in, in category and then package name order. So you can see it's quite a big web page. It's got all the packages listed in here that take flags. So if I do a search for GPM, we know that's part of Vim. You'll see it's actually in the top section here. So it's it's a global switch. It looks like it's also set on a package somewhere there as well. Yeah. So that's probably a mistake there. Oh no. Oh no, I've just scrolled down, I've scrolled down enough. So somewhere here there's a package that's also got GPM listed or it's just a substring of another word of GPM in it. Oh no, it has got it, T-Vision. So because this is a global flag, this package doesn't really need to have it listed. Uh, so I'm not sure why that's there. But because it's a global flag, I'm going to add it to the um, make, make.conf. If I find there's a package I don't want GPM to be activated for, then I'll be setting that on a per package basis, which I will be showing um, for the time being, what I'll do is add in GPM. And what I do here with this is I add the flags in alphabetical order just so it's easy to, to locate them. So all I do is just type in GPM, put a space between each flag, and that, that is as simple as that. So now you can see that I've got the GPM flag activated and I've still got the IPv6 flag use flag deactivated. So I'll save that. 
yes, I do want to save it, write it. Now, the first thing I should do after modifying any use flags, whether it be the global flags or the um, per package flags, is to do an update. So I'll just recall my emerge update command, run that, and that will identify any packages that have got GPM as a use flag, and it will rebuild them. Um, and also remember the um, global use flags, there is a file, um, I can't remember where it is now, but it is in the handbook. If you remember, we looked at this, there's a file on the disk on every Gen 2 system that lists all the global use flags. So you know which ones should go into the make.conf. You do not want to put pa package flags into the make.conf because sometimes the meaning of a flag may differ depending on what package it's in. Right, so it has found one package, ncurses, which takes GPM. So let's rebuild that first before we um, build Vim.
Okay, so in Curse is rebuilt now with GPM support. Um, again, we should run emerge minus step clean to be sure. Uh, nothing's been made um, orphaned in this package to remove. Uh, probably wouldn't be with a rebuild, but it does no harm. Uh, again, rev dep rebuild again, probably not necessary, but if you get used to running these, then yeah, that's quick. It, it knows that uh, hardly anything's changed. Um, yeah, if you get used to these, then you'll you'll never forget to run them, and like I say, you'll have fewer problems. So now, if I do the command to emerge vim. So you can see now um, that GPM is in red, which means it's going to be built with GPM support. Um, the reason why it's not in green is because Vim's not installed at the moment. Otherwise, it would be green because it would be be a change rather than um, a new uh, new uh, flag. So that looks all okay. I'm gonna press enter. to start this build off now.
Okay, so that's Vim installed. So if I do Vi, yeah, I've got a lovely working Vi screen, so I'm happy now. Um, one thing needs to be checked is the value of the editor variable, which should really point to a valid text editor. So that's still pointing at nano. I want to change that to Vi, and eSelect allows us to do that. If you remember, this command lists a load of modules with various configurations that can be altered. And you can see there, there's one for the editor. So if I now do eSelect editor to see what options it's got, I can list or show what, what there is. So there's Nano, there's EX, there's, I think it's a very primitive editor, and there's Fire. None of them are actually set, so it looks like the editor variable has been defaulted to the first in the list, which is Nano. So I'm going to use the set command to set the target to 3 which is Vi and it tells me I need to rerun or resource the profile script and so now if I do echo editor it should say Vi which is good and also if I do eselect list again you can see I've got the default is set next to Vi so now I need to do emerge depth clean now it's trying to remove nano because it's not being used by anything um, it's not part of the um, editor because uh, I've deselected it and it's warning me because it's part of the system profile um, you probably normally wouldn't want to remove this um, but I generally do remove it because VI I've got it in the world set so I, I don't think I'd ever delete it although I agree there is possibly a way of deleting it whereas the system profile is kind of or well, the packages in the system set are kind of hidden in the profile so um, it's probably safe to leave it there but I'm going to be deleting it because I, I don't need it hanging around So you can see in a way this is how this has been made redundant and that's why we run um, Emerge Depth Clean to remove these packages or libraries that are unwanted. And you can also see there it gave me five second countdown where I could have done control C if I thought, oh no, too late. Um, you know, if I realised I shouldn't have done yes. Uh, and finally we'll do Rev Depth Rebuild again. Yeah, that's still consistent. Um, other packages I might want to install that I find useful. Um, you can run in more than one package at a time. So I find smart mon tools can be useful for examining the smart status of disks. Um, HD Palm is a good one for getting stats about a disk. Um, I'm going to add in a text web browser called Links. Um, screen can be useful, a sort of multiplexer for accessing uh, screens remotely or even, even locally and just having several sessions running at once from one command prompt. Um, that'll do for now. I'll do minus AV. And what this will do now is it will calculate all the options for those. So you can see here now it's come across um, an ambiguity. There's two packages in the repository called screen. And one's in the app miss category and one's in the app vim. So this is where I have to specify the actual, um, what they call the atom specifically. So I, it's not the Vim one, it's the top one app, app misc. In fact, it gives you a description in Screen Manager. So I need to type in app-misc forward slash and retry that command. So there's the... Um, 
all the packages that need to be installed. We've got the highlighted ones in green are the ones that are going to be added to the world set because they're the ones I specifically requested and I didn't specify the one shot or the minus one uh, switch to emerge. So it's going to add them in and then all the other packages you see are the ones that are going to be pulled in as dependencies. And this is probably a good time to just look at the use, file, uh, use flags to see if there's anything in there that you might want to add. Um, and currently I can't see anything. That I particularly want to add in. So I'll just press enter there and start building them.
Okay, so those packages have been installed. Um, it looked like there was some messages that went past and for some reason my history is not working. I can't scroll back, so I'm not sure why that is. Perhaps I need to um, actually enable something in the kernel. Um, but it looks like we need to do an initial setup for null mailer. Just paste that in and run that. And it says to tweak this file here as well. Well, I'm not going to be actually using it knowingly. Um, there's some information there for screen as well. Now, um, there is um, a package called QLOP, is it, I think. Yeah, it shows, I'm not sure if we'll be able to view the log with this, but it shows some information about the packages that have been built. You can specify date ranges and so on. Um, uh, QLOP minus minus help. Let's have a look. Right, that's scrolled off the screen as well. Right, okay. So at the top you can see you can specify dates to see what was installed and what date and so on. Um, so merge history. Sure, if that might be useful. No, that just shows what's been merged in. So that's all the packages that have been um, recompiled. What I can do is try and find. There's a um, some logs that are kept. Is it this e log? I think. Yeah, summary.log. So if I do less summary.log, I'll go to the end of the file. Yeah, there's smart one tools. Okay, maybe there wasn't any more information. There's screen, there's links. Right, okay, but you can see there's all the packages and the messages and what files have been installed, so that, that can be quite useful. The reason why I'm taking so much notice of this is because I thought SmartMon Tools um, actually told us about something that I was going to show next, and it obviously doesn't. Um, but if I use a command called eQuery, um, this is quite a useful package to use. It shows, um, if you use the U command, it shows what use flags there are. So if I do U and then smart mon tools, um, you see that uh, what's in blue has not been set and what is in red, the use flag has been set. There's one in particular that I was interested in is this update drive DB and what it does, it installs a script to update the drive DB file so that the um, uh, drive database is always up to date for smart one tools. And I thought the output from that told, you know, gave us some information about setting that if you wanted to. So obviously hasn't. So update drive DB, I imagine is going to be a per use flag. So what I'm going to do is to just look that up on the use flag index. Update drive db. Uh, okay, it's not update. Oh, it's underscore drive db. So there it is under smart one tool. So yes, it looks like it is a per package um, use flag. So what I'm going to do now is to show you how to set a per package use flag. 
Um, if you remember, well, in fact, yesterday, I think we did set one. Um, in the use my keyboard in um let's do vi etc portage so in here there's various um configuration files that can be set um, and we created this package dot use we converted it from a um a package dot use directory and created a file so that's what i'm going to be editing now yes that's right we added a uh, one in for grub so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this e query again, and I want to copy this right mouse this information here. So it's the category and the um, e build name, not not the full atom with the version. Um, and then I want to add in update underscore drive db. So I'll just add this in here. As I say, I add them in, in alphabetical order. Um, if there's another sysapp, so I'd have add it right next to here, but I'll leave a gap between each different category. So sysapp, sysboot, different categories, I put a space between them. And then I want to add in update DB. Now what I normally do is just copy and paste this because it's easy to get mistakes. Um, as you've already seen, I try to search for update hyphen DB when in fact it's update underscore drive DB. So I'll add this in, paste that in, save that. And now if I do the update command, it should det detect that new use flag. And it should ask me to, um, or offer to rebuild that package. So yeah, it's it's got R for the rebuild, and you can see update drive DB is new. It's got a star next to it, and it's it's in green, so it's a change. So let's let this one rebuild with this new use flag. Oh, right, okay, this is the message I was thinking of. It only tells you when you've actually um, 
set this flag so it gives us instructions how to um, manage this update it says there's already drive database so it's probably installed one um, as part of the update um, and it gives us instructions what to do here so we need to copy this file and then run the update command and because we've got this update drive db command it will tell us this message every time we update um, smart mon tools and this will probably say oh it has updated it actually I, I thought it might have been already up to date um, so that's it so that means the drive database for smart mon tools is now up to date and every time we update smart mon tools it will remind us um, we could even probably maybe put that in a uh, cron job to update say weekly for example uh, lastly I'm going to do a merge step clean and a ref depth rebuild to make sure that um, nothing untoward has changed um, depth clean and ref depth rebuild tend to come into play more when you're removing packages rather than um, updates occasionally you do see updates that cause libraries to be or packages to be become redundant maybe the functionality has been moved to other libraries and you know the older libraries become deprecated or out of date so it tends not to be updates although having said that you, you do updates more than you do removing packages so that's probably why um, you're more likely to see it with updates but it is more about looking for orphaned files and old files that are hanging around. That's what these two functions are really about. Yeah, so everything's all up to date. So just to recap, this video has been about uh, showing you how to add packages to the system and also a little bit about um, managing the flags um, the global flags in make.config and per package flags. Uh, just before I go, one other thing I'll show is uh, eQuery, which is quite useful. As I say, we've seen the U um, option, which shows the U, the use flags for package. Um, one other one, which is quite useful, is the B belongs. Uh, for example, if I want to know, um, say, where what package ping belongs to, I can do this command, eQuery B ping and it will scan through the database and the package database and uh, output what um, package that file belongs to. So you can see it's it's in bin ping and it belongs to the IP utils package and, and that's obviously the version I've got installed. And one other one that um, is quite useful is um, Was it? I was going to show. Oh, the keywords. That's right. Um, if you do wire and a package, so for example, it's the GCC. This will show you what currently available versions there are, and also which one you've got installed. So you can see down at the headings at the top, we've got columns going down. So x86 this is the column I'm interested in and plus means that that version is available to install the tilde means that we'd have to override this um, version with a file called uh, package.accept keywords in the portage directory and we'd have to put a copy of or we'd have to put sistervel slash gcc in the version number and then a squiggle with the actual um, keyword we want to add in so in this case it'll be squiggle or tilde uh, x86 if it's amd64 it'll be squiggle or tilde amd64 so this is quite a useful thing if you want to see what other versions of software um, there are for each package so you can see currently in um, if you like it this unstable versions we've got 9.30 release 2 and then there's two versions of gcc 10.0 2.0 release 2 and 3 so for some reason we need version 10 we could switch that by adding as I say this version i.e. the whole atom the uh, category the e-build name and the version into um, etc 
reportage package dot accept keywords. Um, so that's that's quite handy as well. So uh, I was going to complete the videos um, with this one, make it the last one, but I might have a go at installing um, X Windows and maybe installing some desktop environments. Um, the only reason I'm a bit unsure is because the age of the machine. This was really about getting a 32-bit machine going more for you know lightweight stuff like a server um, rather than for a desktop machine I, th I think it'll be a little bit sluggish as a desktop machine but uh, I've been thinking about it I think I might have a go just to see how slow it, it really is I th I'm sure it's going to be slow to compile I think it's going to be um, probably days to install um, all the software required for a nice desktop and you know a few utilities and so on um, so I might do that in a few stages and I'm probably publish them as well but as it is this this machine although you've seen it's a little bit slow to compile it it's still nippy enough to do things um, for example a web server I've, in fact i've got um, a pentium pro 200 megahertz that i use occasionally as a web server and and an S, svn server as well um, and it's fine for those sort of things it's it's uh, all right it's not blindingly fast but it responds in reasonably enough time it's, it's ideal um, you know, to reuse a machine, this sort of machine with two gigs of memory, you could probably do quite a lot more with it um, in terms of a server. But as I say, a desktop, although it's got a, a relatively fast card for the age of the hardware uh, video card in it, it I think it's going to be a little bit, a um, little bit of a slow desktop environment if I if I do do that. So. If you do see more videos, and obviously you know that I did decide to have a go at it, but uh, this could be the last video in this uh, series of installing Gen 2 on 32-bit. Um, and I hope you enjoyed what you've seen up till now. And if you did, please like the video. And um, if you want to see more of my videos as they get published, then press the subscribe button, the red subscribe button, and you'll get notifications of um, uh, when when I do publish them.